Should a Lubavitcher Chassid read biographies written about the Rebbe? I read most of the biographies. And to be very candid, I liked them all. Because they freshened up many things and they also gave enormous amounts of information, background. They have incredible uh, source material, Madam Akemis, that allow you to look up the sources of so many things that you always knew and didn't know where it was said or written and so on. But apparently, for people who did not know the Rebbe, these books fall under a category, at least for many people, of mitahe desatmeim and mitame desatayim. That means, in other words, as people who are coming from the outside read these books, it's incredibly uplifting. It's incredibly encouraging. Because these books are filled with infinite Avas Yisrael, a Jew who knew, knew you not at all, and yet loved you so totally. They're filled with incredible wisdom, incredible clarity, incredible faith, incredible hope, and incredible proactivity. The idea that you can actually make the world a better place and bring Mashiach. All of those messages come across in the book. But for Hasidic people, particularly young people, Hasidic Bacharim, the you know, when you write the Rebbe's name, you write Chav Kuf Admur. When I was a little boy, I didn't know what Chav Kuf meant. I was embarrassed to ask. So it was Chav Kuf Admur. Admur, I knew, meant Adenenim Adenim Rabbeinu. Chav Kuf means Kveit Kedushas, the holiness of the Rebbe. And, and the very definition of the holiness of the Rebbe means that the Rebbe is beyond our comprehension. That the Rebbe is ain't Saf. And the Rebbe is a mystery. The Peretz Machkin used to say, "Vos is a Rebbe, what's a Rebbe? Alts vos man veis vegenem is a hagdom to vos it is. That everything you could possibly know about what a Rebbe is, is a mere introduction to what he is. Reb Nacham Chenabler, Reb Matla Chenabler used to say that he's a tzaddik nister. Reb Matla Chenabler said that he was a hidden tzaddik. So when somebody said to Reb Matla Chenabler, how are you a hidden tzaddik? Everybody knows you're a tzaddik, you're a revealed tzaddik. So Reb Matla Chenabler responded, and he said, if I am what you know, it's a Rachman on me and it's a Rachman on you. And culture of a Kalachim and by the Rabbeim then see him. That what we know about the Rebbe is what we can know, what the Rebbe shows, what the Rebbe teaches. And the Rebbe is ancient, the Rebbe is holy. Kedusha, a Lukus. And it is true that in these Sfarim, the holiness, the Ainsafius, the transcendent element is at least dulled. And it has a significantly diminishing effect of the awe, of the aura, of the holiness with which a chassidish person, a chassidish bocher, a chassidish girl must relate to the Rebbe. And it's come to my attention that many people have read these books and it's given them a very human Rebbe. Now, one of the things that's very difficult to understand is that, yes, the Rebbe was very, very human. And at the same time, the Rebbe was a lakus. There was something very, very not human about him in a very, very real way. There was godliness manifest upon him. The Shekhinah rested upon him. And that's not human. The, the, the greatness of a tzaddik, the greatness of a Rebbe, is that holiness emerges through the human form. In other words, that there's no contradiction. But when the humanity of the Rebbe diminishes, the holiness of the Rebbe, it steals, it deprives, it takes away from somebody something very, very important in his amuna and his relationship to the Rebbe, which ultimately has to do with his own avoid, with his understanding of what a person is and his mission on this earth. Yiddishkeit is very, very logical, but it's not meant to be logical. It's meant to present God. The logic of Yiddishkeit is meant to bring us to something greater than logical. And if we understand the Teda so well, and we make it so logical that we see no need for that extra dimension, the logic becomes a klipa, it becomes a concealment between the Teda as we understand it and the Teda how the Abish is written into it. And the same is true, I believe, when young people read these books. I, I've seen it, and I've, more than I've witnessed it personally, I've heard many accounts 
of Bochum losing their sense of the holiness of the Rebbe. And as such, it's been said by wiser and older people than myself that these books are wonderful for people who have no relationship with the Rebbe, and they may have an adverse effect on the people who do have a relationship with the Rebbe, which really means they shouldn't read them. The unfortunate truth is that too many people don't ask advice, but it's, it's probably wise that people who are younger should not read these for them. Thank you.